Uh, good morning guys, thanks for joining me. What I thought we'd do in today's video is talk about a knife which I've been carrying now for about four to five years and it doesn't need any introduction and that's the Mora Bushcraft Black. So quickly just running through the spec of the knife, the overall length of the Bushcraft Black is uh, nine and a quarter inches. So a little bit bigger, you know, a little bit longer and also a little bit heavier than the majority of the Mora knives out there on the market. And the steel that they've used is Nicarbon steel, very similar to 1095 which is called a UHB-20C. So the cutting length of the blade is four and a quarter inches and that's given us the handle length of five inches. And again, very comfortable knife to hold, just like the majority of uh, Mora knives always are. So what they've done here just to help, uh, you know, combat a little bit of the rusting in the carbon steel and that's uh, applying this coating on it and they call it a DLC coating or a diamond like coating and again you know it's very durable there's the odd bit of scratching and also scuffing but you know after four years worth of work you know that's to be expected so we'll quickly just take a look at the spine of the knife and uh, Mora have actually prepared this one for us directly from the factory you know what you do notice with a lot of Mora knives is the fact that the spine itself is actually rounded off a little bit which is no big deal you know if it has you've got uh, some kind of companion knife and that's the case it's just a case of just getting a file and just touching it over quickly which will give you this kind of spine but like i mentioned just you know with it being a bushcraft knife that was the least that mortar could do for us so we can have to use it just for processing down firewood and also just using it in conjunction with your ferro rod it's fair to say that the majority of people always pick up on the fact that uh, this style of mortar knife has never full tang the tang itself on this knife actually goes around about three quarters of the way down the handle and you can just test that out just by using a magnet now if it is that uh, you want to use this knife for the majority of uh, all your camp tasks certainly when it comes to battening wood you know that's down to yourself you know i'm not one of those kind of people that says that you should do it or you shouldn't do it this knife in particular here you know i've battened i've used some fire lighting and that's something i'm going to show you in a minute which is a one stick fire just by using the bushcraft black you know my opinion don't be worried about battening it but also just be careful if you're going to be doing that now the handle itself is a very uh, comfortable ergonomic handle i've only got small hands you know so i do find it nice and comfortable to hold but if it says that you've not used one before you know it might be worth just getting your hands on one if you can just to check that it feels good in the hand and this uh, Crichton style rubber just over this uh, solid green plastic where the blade actually inserts into it you know my opinion is a good style and like i say you know i could use it all day long without any kind of fatigue or hot spots one thing which does impress me about the Mora Bushcraft Black, you know, and which it should do, is the way which it cuts. The steel itself is quite thin, it's only one eighth steel. And again with this uh, 1095 equivalent, like I mentioned, it does all the wicked edge, but also you can actually get these knives razor sharp. So again for food prep, cutting cordage, preparing firewood, you know, this knife will do it all. So I've just dropped it first thing this morning, just before it actually came out, and perhaps one thing I haven't mentioned is the fact that this black coating covers the entire cutting edge and just over the years just as i've been sharpening the knife that i've now actually lost that which is no big deal i do actually tend to sharpen the knife just by laying them flat on the stone finding the angle and cutting them anyway i'm not that uh, particularly bothered about putting the micro bevel back onto it so losing that coating again wasn't any big deal so what we're going to do we're just going to check just how sharp the knife is now and then once we've actually done a bit of work with it later we can just actually check it again just to see whether this knife has held its edge so just standard paper here and as you can see, you know, it's cutting really well like as expected. So what we'll do after, we'll just retest it and just have to see just how well it cuts. So the first job which we're going to use the knife for is actually make a one stick fire or a one log fire. And with that being said, we're going to use all aspects of the knife. We're actually going to batten through this wood to make a little bit of kindling and fuel. Then going to use the cutting edge just to be able to make a few feathers and curls. And also we're going to use the span of the knife just to scrape a little bit of this wood down then also use the ferro rod after once the fire has been prepared and it's ready to be lit.
So after lighting that fire, that took around about three or four minutes, something like that. You know, just after we split the wood down, shaved it down, and then just struck the rod just by using the spine of the knife. I've just had to extinguish that fire. I'm not looking at, uh, you know, cooking food or boiling water, that kind of thing. So the next thing what I want to look at is a couple of notches, certainly two which will come in handy as a number seven notch. You know, if you're making tent stakes, that kind of thing, but also the beak notch or the hoop notch if you're going to be making pot hangers. So as well as carving the notches out, which are obviously going to come in handy for various things, we could also use the knife for any other carving projects which we may have. What I've got here is just a little spoon which I've been carving out. And this is just a piece of rowan or mountain ash as it's sometimes referred to. And using the bush trap like to carve this has been a pleasure. The knife's not too big, it's not too heavy, but with it being razor sharp it means that the cuts are nice and smooth. And with that being said I won't have to use any sandpaper just to smooth it down with. The only air drawback with them is, is when it comes to cutting the bowl out tend to find it's quite difficult with a straight knife like this hence the reason for hoop knives or another thing which you can actually do is just put a coal in there and actually burn its way down what they call coal burning and actually form the bowl that way so like most of us when it comes to bushcraft or you know just camping in general I do carry more than one knife with me most of the time it'll be the LT right either the GNS or the Genesis but uh, you know in the rucksack or you know sometimes I will carry this as my primary knife you know will be the bushcraft black so you know then you can be a little bit more selective about the kind of work which it is that you can do with it like I showed you just, I've just actually battened through this just to create uh, that little bit of firewood for us. But again, if I got more of an heavy duty knife, that would have been the first option. And then you could actually just leave this for a bit more of the delicate task, like I mentioned, you know, carving notches, the spoons, and also all the other camp chores, just like cutting cordage, you know, food prep if you want to use that for that skinning game and the likes. So what I've actually got here is some paracord, and this is my preferred paracord. This has come from Wild Elk. Now this is 550 cord in woodland camo. Again, we've preferred pattern, you know, certainly for the British woodland, you know, this uh, does blend in really well. So what we're going to do here, just cut a length off, just after that little bit of work that we've just been doing, just to see how it actually uh, cuts the cordage. And, uh, you know, that's uh, just as good as what it was when I first brought it down. So as you can see there, you know, that's, uh, that edge is still wickedly keen. So if I just get the camera just to pick it up, if I just move forward slightly. What you'll notice there is, you know, we haven't got any chips, we haven't got any kind of rolls, there's no damage. And for those of you which may have watched the, uh, the video which I did just maintaining our carbon steel, you know what I perhaps may have to do with this when I get in is just put a small uh, light coat of oil just on the cutting edge, you know, and that should be fine. For those of you which may like the knife but perhaps think it's a little bit too small, then more of that have got a bigger version of it called the Bushcraft Pathfinder. I think the blade's around about 5 inches long and the handle again is a little bit bigger and I think the overall length's around about 10 or 11 inches. But again, bigger knife, bigger price, I think it's around about £75. And again, a lot of people do seem to think, you know, if you're going to be paying £75, you may as well put another 25 towards it and start looking at an entry-level LT right or perhaps an SE, something like that. Just before we start to wrap the video up, what I thought to do, like I mentioned at the beginning, I was just check the edge. Like I was saying, you know, it's quite odd just to tell for half sharp just by rubbing your fingers across it, you know, plus also there's a good chance of cutting yourself. So just using the same paper as what uh, we did with the beginning. And again, you know, that uh, edge.
you know, is still as sharp as what it was. I may just drop it when I get it, it certainly doesn't need any work uh, doing to it with the stone. But like I mentioned, you know, if you're looking for a good quality knife, you don't want to be spending a lot of money, then probably the Bushcraft Black, you know, is a good knife worth looking at. Well guys, that's it for this one, and like always, that just leaves me to say thanks a lot for stopping by and watching the video, like always. Until next time, you take care, and I'll see you again.